I'm gonna show you how you can learn your entire banjo fretboard in one week with a simple pattern. Be fully transparent about this. I practiced about three hours a day for about five days and had this pretty much down pat. So you are going to have to put a little work in with this. I am gonna simplify all the chord shapes down into two string chord shapes just to make it simpler on you and easier to learn this because what we're here to do is learn the fretboard. We're not here to learn chord shapes. And also hang around to the end of the video because I'm gonna show you after I show you all this patterns and chord shapes, how they all fit together and open up your fretboard for you. Last but not least, if you can count to five, you can do this. <laughs> let's go. So before I get started showing you this pattern, I want you to know that the roll that I'll be using during, I'm showing you this, just a foggy mountain roll. So it's a two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. So two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. I don't care what order you play them in with your fingers, just it's two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. If that's too much to take on while you're trying to learn this, Simplify it down. Just pick with your index and middle finger on the first two strings. That's all you're going to have to do. So you can... We're gonna start with the G chord, which your banjo should be tuned to an open G. If we look at the fretboard and open G up here at the nut, the nut is actually a bar chord. If you think about your fretboard being extended on past your nut and there being frets up through here and your nut is a fret, well then you would bar it right there to get that same G pattern starts the bar you come down five frets one two three four five that fifth fret is the bottom of what would be your f chord shape or your y chord shape now like i said before i'm going to simplify these shapes into two string chords so in this scenario we're not going to need fourth string or the third string so we're going to take our uh index finger off and we're going to take our middle finger off and it leaves us with this shape right here which is we'll call this the f chord shape or the y chord shape whatever you prefer from the f chord position we're going to drop down four frets one two, three, four. At the fourth fret, that'll be the bottom of what would be your D shape, or we'll call it the X chord position or the D position, whatever you prefer. And again, in this position, we're gonna simplify it because we don't need the fourth string and we don't need the third string. So that leaves us with these two fingers on these frets. And what I suggest doing is actually using your index finger and your ring finger for this, because later down on the road, when you get into backup a lot more, you'll have to reach with these fingers. So from the D chord shape or the X shape, you drop down three frets, one, two, three. Now you're back at your bar chord. Now again, we're not using the fourth string or the third string, so we're gonna go with a two finger. And that's the next position for your G chord. Now at the bar chord, the same as the top up there, we're just starting over again. Now you're just gonna count down five more frets, one, two, three, four, five. And that again is the bottom of your F chord or Y chord shape. From your F chord or your Y chord shape, you're gonna drop down four frets. One, two, three, four. And then that's gonna be now your D chord shape. So if you're learning your G, your G open. Your first position on your G. Second position on your G. Third, fourth, fifth. And I suggest going through that and learning it all the way down and all the way back up the fretboard. Being able to do that all the way down and all the way back up. No matter how you play those two strings, learn those positions for the G chord. Now I wanna do C, I'm gonna do C and D with you and then I'm gonna show you how it opens up. Everybody makes their C chord like this. Middle fingers on your fourth string, your ring fingers on your first string of the second fret, and then your first fingers on the second string of the first fret. But what you gotta do is figure out is that in F position, the D position, which position is that? Well, what you do is you come back down here and make your D chord and then you slide it up two frets, one, two, that takes that finger off. Well, now you're back in that C position. So the C is actually out of the D shape. And again, we don't need the fourth string, so we're taking it off, and that leaves us with these two fingers here. Insert our index and ring finger there. From here, now we know, now we know this is the D position. We're gonna drop down three frets. One, two, three, and go to the bar chord. Well, there's a C. And from the bar chord, what we do? Five frets, one, two, three, four, five. And there's your C with the F chord shape. Four more frets, one, two, three, four. And we go back to our D position, there's another C. Three more frets, one, two, three, bar chord. There's a C. And then you can go down one, two, three, four, five. Go back to the F position and there's your final C. So C, there's your 
see all the way up and down. Study it and learn it all the way down and all the way back up. Then you can move on to D. D is not as hard as G or C, but we're going to show you. If you're doing a D, you're going to start off with the D position, but we're not going to need the fourth or third string. So we're going to move our, that finger out and we're going to move that finger out, which leaves us with these two. We know that's the D shaped position. Now from the D shaped position, we drop down three frets. One, two, three, bar chord. From there, we drop down five frets. One, two, three, four, five. That's the bottom of our F chord shape. From there, we go four. One, two, three, four. Go to our D chord shape. From there, you drop down three more. One, two, three, and that's the bar shape. So the D. So now I've showed you the G, C, and D with this pattern and how you find all these up and down the fretboard. I suggest that you go on through A, B, F, E, and, and do them the same way. I can't stress enough that you don't want to get into guessing where a chord is at. You want to know where it's at, and that's why I want you to go all through every chord shape and do that because it'll start opening up for you and you'll start seeing it. Now that we've learned the chords up and down the neck, I'm going to show you something that really opened it up for me when I figured all this out. Music, like if you're playing backup music, generally you're in a 1-4-5 music progression. More or less what that means up a G scale is you got G1, a2, B3, C4, and D5. So a G, C, D is a chord progression in most songs. We'll start here on the eighth and ninth fret of our banjo, and this is a G. Well, if I was looking for a C, where would I find it? Well, all I gotta do is put my pinky down. Then if I need the D, I slide two frets down from there. And then back to home. That's a one, four, five chord progression right there. So G. Now, what makes this so cool is say I'm not in a G, C, D. Say I'm in an E, A, B, right? For whatever reason, you'd be playing E, A, B, but E, A, B. So you come up here and grab the E, which is in the same chord position as your G was down here, but it's just an E, right? And so where's your chord progression here? There's an E same as it was below. You put your pinky down and then two frets. There's an E one, four, five chord progression. But what's really cool about this deal is it works with every chord position if you're in that key. Now let's go back here for the key of G for just a minute because I've showed you the D position, right? Now let me show you the bar chord shape. If you come to the bar chord, we're on a G down here at the 12th fret, and this is our bar chord shape. Where's our C from here? Oh, it's right here next to it. Here's the F chord shape. Once you start putting all that together, the how them chord shapes work together when you're playing in a backup situation or you're playing with a band or what have you, that will help you out tremendously because if you don't know what the chord progression is, but you know they're in the key of G, well, generally it's a one, four, five. You can go to that and just. No matter what key they're in. I hope this has helped you learn the fretboard as much as it did me. We'll see you next time.